in our next section, we're going to look at implementing classical Ethernet on Nexus and XOS. And first, we'll talk about just a general uh, review and overview of classical Ethernet design and how the three-tiered architecture works for traditional layer two switching. Uh, we'll look at specifically how to configure this on Nexus and talk about some of the, the differences between NXOS and Catalyst iOS, which is then ultimately going to lead us into the data center specific switching topics or the Nexus uh, specific switching topics, which would be virtual port channel, fabric path, uh, VXLAN, OTV, et cetera which ultimately are going to alleviate some of the design problems that we would run into with our traditional Ethernet networks and what we now refer to as uh, classical Ethernet. Now, as I mentioned, in a traditional Ethernet design, we typically use what is called a uh, three-tier design or three modular building blocks, which are the access layer, the aggregation or the distribution layer, and the, uh, the core layer. Uh, most of you hopefully are probably familiar with this from just tra traditional enterprise design or, you know, CCMP switching type logic. So I'm not going to spend a ton of time talking about just the background of this. Uh, but f uh, for those of you that are not very familiar with it, I would recommend to take a look at this link here, which is the Campus Enterprise Architecture or what used to be called the Gigabit Campus Network Design Guide. Uh, it's part of the Cisco uh, Solution Reference Network Design Guides, the SRNDs, or what's now called the Cisco Validated Designs, the CVDs, which is essentially just the, uh, the design recommendations about how uh, to build the uh, campus network. And so if we, you should be able to click the link from the PDF of the, the copy of the slides, but let me go ahead and, and search for this one here. Uh, which is Enterprise Campus Architecture Overview and Framework. Okay, there may be a newer version than this, than 3.0. Let's see what the date on this one is. This uh, doesn't really say. Okay, but the this goes over the hierarchy, okay, what we're talking about here, the three-layer design, access, distribution, and core. And then what we're going to focus on here is the resiliency, and then what are the services in terms of the uh, how the redundancy works and how the, uh, the throughput is going to be allocated in an active standby way as opposed to active active forwarding, which ultimately what is what we are trying to achieve uh, in the data center switching design is that we don't want to leave any links that are just sitting there doing nothing that are in the backup or the standby uh, mode. We want to be forwarding over every port that we are uh, that we are physically allocating in the network. Okay, so again, if we look at the uh, kind of traditional design for this from a visual point of view, let me get back to my slides here. This would be our traditional campus network design or our three-tier design. Where the access layer, this is going to be where we're plugging our services in, in. Services being our end stations, like our desktops, printers, wireless access points, etc. We're then going to be aggregating the physical, physical cabling and the bandwidth to the distribution or the aggregation layer. Okay, that's typically where we're going to have our layer 2 to layer 3 gateways. Okay, like from the desktop's point of view, this is going to be where the default gateway is. And then the core, where we are connecting the different distribution blocks together. So as we start to scale the network out, we basically just take this, uh, this two-tier design that is going from the distribution and the access. We make another copy of this block. Okay, we have a pair of distribution switches that are going to a pair of access switches. Okay, so we're multi-home to both directions, to the distribution. Distribution is plugged into the core. And then ultimately, we, we continue to scale the network out as opposed to scaling the network up. Okay, we'll hear this term again as we look at the different fabric designs within the scope of data center and a CLOS fabric, a CLOS, and we look at the design uh, functionality of fabric path and VXLAN versus this traditional classical Ethernet design. And what those two terms mean, scaling up versus scaling out, and scaling up means that you're trying to solve the problem by buying bigger resources. So for example, if you were to scale up a server, you would add faster processors with more cores, with more memory, with more disks, et cetera, but it would be within the same server. 
Okay, so let's say you have a server with two terabytes of RAM, and you have a server with 32 cores. As opposed to scaling out, scaling out would be that you have more resources that are spread across multiple machines, that instead of buying a 32 core box, maybe you buy four eight core boxes. And you buy four boxes that have 500 gigs of RAM each, uh, as opposed to two terabytes uh, for one uh, larger box. Okay, same thing is going to be true from the network point of view. That as we start to add additional resources uh, to use the network, how do we want to solve the scaling problem? Do we want to buy bigger switches? So in the core of the network, do we want to buy Nexus 7718 and put all of our line cards uh, in those two individual boxes? Or do we want to buy smaller switches like Nexus 5Ks or Nexus 9Ks, like fixed uh, switches? But do we want to buy more of them in order to spread the load between multiple physical boxes as, op as opposed to smaller uh, amount of larger boxes? Now, we're going to see that with classical Ethernet design, scaling out becomes a problem because of active standby forwarding and because of spanning tree ultimately running behind the scenes, which is main, or one of the main things that we're trying to solve with the data center switching techniques is we don't want to run spanning tree. Because with spanning tree at the access layer, we're going to have our root port going towards the root bridge where we're actively forwarding, okay, where we're learning MAC addresses and sending packets out. And then we have any of our other ports that are going to be in the blocking state that are just sitting there waiting for the primary interface to fail. And then once the primary interface fails, then we can send our traffic in the, uh, the alternate direction. So for example, if we were to take this particular campus network example, and we were running layer two switching everywhere, from this access switch here, the port on the left, let's say that this is going to be the root port, the port on the right is going to be the blocking link. Well, it basically means that this distribution switch here is, is sitting and doing nothing from access switch one's point of view. But what we want to achieve is we want to forward the traffic in both directions. So we want to forward packets to the left, we want to forward packets to the right. Once it gets to the distribution, we want to use all four of these links in order to get to the core and so on and so forth. So we don't want 10 gig ports, uh, 40 gig ports, 100 gig ports sitting there forwarding no traffic and then just waiting for a failure to occur before we start to, uh, to, to send traffic on those uh, particular links. So we'll see that this is going to be kind of the recurring theme as we talk about in more detail the data center switching uh, specific topics is how do we get away from this traditional uh, limitation of the, the three-tier design in classical Ethernet and then what are some of the other alternatives as opposed to spanning tree that we can run in order to solve uh, this particular design problem.